All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're nice and cozy in that seat of yours. And if you're not, you take a seat right now. Because I need you nice and cozy. We're talking about Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and this is going to be a longer video, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all. We have an absolute metric ton of information to talk about with Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Now, I woke up like a lunatic today. I woke up thinking about this game. And just saying, wow, we are over a month away. So I put it out onto the Twitterverse thinking, hey, let's see if anyone else is feeling what I'm feeling right now. And Bioware just kicked their feet up and went, all right, bet. And they dropped all of this information that we're going to go over today. So it's going to be a longer video. And with that, I just want to say thank you to all of you who are supporting the longer content, some of the different content I'm doing. I'm looking to diversify. So now's your chance. Submit crazy video ideas. I'm looking to go a little more wild here because as much as I like doing news, I'm feeling a strong desire to go beyond that and do more creative stuff. And I have some ideas, but I want to go ahead and phone in the audience here and just say, hey, what do you also want to see? Name your craziest ideas. I don't care, man. I'm open to all of them. So fire away. And with that, all my requests are done. It's all information from this point forward. Let's talk about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. In this video, we're going to be getting into combat tuning in the original Mass Effect, additional gameplay improvements for all Mass Effect games, the Mako in the original Mass Effect and what's changing there, unifying and modernizing the trilogy and what they're doing for all three games, as well as Galaxy at War being rebalanced for Mass Effect 3, something that I've got a lot of questions about as a diehard Mass Effect 3 multiplayer fan. But before all of that, let's talk about some brand new gameplay footage and comparison footage that's happening over on IGN. Now, a little bit of a Matty fun fact here. I remember one time that they posted something exclusive to Mafia 3, and then IGN ended up using a copyright claim on my channel when I posted it with some commentary in the background talking about it. So I'm going to show only about 15 seconds of it, but there is a full video on IGN right now, about 11 minutes long, comparing and contrasting the two. I'll have it linked in the description down below. But there's a lot of new gameplay here. There's a lot of new things to look at. Ultimately, this will just get you hyped. It's more juice for that engine, baby. Other than that, let's get into the actual information and what is truly changing, starting off with combat tuning. Combat in the Mass Effect trilogy has evolved across the series, with each game's experience being different. We wanted to make the experience better across the board, but didn't want to unnecessarily change what our fans have come to love about each game. That proved a unique challenge as the first game is quite different from the second and third in the terms of gameplay and combat. Mass Effect was heavily influenced by traditional RPG mechanics, like the randomness of a dice roll and pen and paper stat building. As a result, weapons in Mass Effect often felt less accurate and reliable than the gunplay in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Three. We've heard consistent feedback that it was pretty frustrating to take a few shots with an assault rifle and suddenly have the reticle enlarge to span a portion of the screen. So we looked at tuning the mechanics to provide better handling without outright scrapping the spirit of the original game. In the first Mass Effect, accuracy including reticle bloom and weapon sway has been tuned across all weapons to allow players to maintain more consistent firepower while still managing their shots slash overheat meter. We've also improved the aim down sights camera view to be tighter on combat so that ADS is more precise, like the second and third game, and we've improved the aim assist to provide better precision. These small behind the scenes changes collectively make combat much snappier, putting more control into the player's hands. Abilities have also been rebalanced in the first game. For example, the immunity ability now grants a powerful defensive buff that lasts a brief period of time instead of being a small buff that lasts indefinitely. So kind of like what they said openly in their article here, this does sound a bit more underneath the hood, behind the scenes, nothing crazy on the front lines is shifting with your gameplay system. But there's one game that comes to mind that I think of with under the hood changes that felt so much better with its re-release that it is a night and day difference and it's hard to put your finger on it. That game of all titles is Borderlands Game of the Year Edition. Now the first Borderlands is one of my favorite co-op games of all time. I adore it. I have great co-op memories on it with a couple of buddies of mine and also I'm a huge fan of Borderlands too. But typically speaking, Borderlands 2 and 3 feel really good with combat, while 1, being a game that released in 2009, feels a tad sluggish. So then, before Borderlands 3, they did a remaster slash re-release of Game of the Year Collection. And I remember talking to even prominent Borderlands YouTubers, like Killer6, and asking them, does this not feel absolutely incredible to play? There's a locomotion, a smoothness. There's something underneath the hood that changed here, right? Because it felt good. And they all agreed. And so while some of these changes may seem inconsequential, they can make a massive difference. And I'm looking at that game as an example of those subtle changes 
adding up and you really start to feel it as your experience goes on. And especially in this case, where it's going to translate over the course of three full RPGs, I'm really happy to see that because I feel we can provide that same effect here. Now, here are some specific gameplay changes that they made to the first Mass Effect with the goal of bringing it a bit more online with the rest of the trilogy. Shepard can now sprint out of combat. Melee attacks are now mapped to a button press rather than automatically occurring in proximity to an enemy. Pause right there, thank God. I forgot how bad that sucked. All right, back to it. Weapon accuracy and handling has been significantly improved. So the reticle bloom is more controlled as they said. Weapon sway removed from sniper rifles. Aiming down sight slash tight aim camera view has been improved and improved aim assist for target acquisition. All this is already mentioned. All relevant enemies now take headshot damage in the first game. Previously, some did not, including humanoid enemies. All right, pause right there again. This is what I'm talking about. Subtle quality of life enhancements. That responsive feedback to, hey, I shot him in the head. Should take more damage. These types of things that were not relevant in the original game are going to be here now, and it's going to add up. Ammo mods like anti-organic, anti-synthetic, etc. can now drop throughout the whole game. Previously, these stopped dropping at higher player levels. They are now also available to purchase from vendors. So a little bit of rebalancing there. All weapons can be used by any class without penalty. Specializations, the ability to train slash upgrade certain weapons, are still class specific. So you can have a little bit more experimentation this time. And weapons cool down much faster. So yeah, I'm a bit hot and cold on the weapon cooldown system. I'm glad that they kept it for the first one because I think it's really important for obviously the lore. It would sort of betray things if they suddenly had thermal clips. That said, uh, the weapons cooling down faster actually reminds me of the amount of times I was like hunkered down in cover waiting for my weapon because I overheated it to finish cooling down. And so what was really five seconds felt like an eternity because you want to get back in there. You know, combat's demanding your attention. You want to act. So I think that's overall a really good change there. There's still actually a another list of changes so let's keep going meta gel usage has been improved the base cooldown reduced leveling benefits increased and it increases liara's bonus to cooldowns the inventory management has improvements so items can now be flagged as junk which is great that's an amazing quality of life improvement all junk items can now be converted into omni gel or sold at merchants at once once again fantastic quality of life change here for inventory management and inventory and stores now have sorting functionality so you can find specific weapons armor what have you some abilities have been rebalanced as we talked about and weapon powers those that are unlocked on each weapon type skill tree have been improved so the effectiveness slash strength is increased such as the duration reduced in some cases and the heat now resets on power activation take a breath right that's enough for a full video onto its own there's a lot changing there from meta gel to inventory i indicated what i think was a little more significant like to me inventory management in rpgs is oftentimes an absolute travesty so any more being able to manage things and see things easily uh, when you're looting everything under the sun is good news to me but it goes beyond the original mass effect there's also additional improvements coming to mass effect 2 and three. So beyond general gunplay changes, we've made some specific changes to encounters, enemies, and how you engage in combat. We also found a few opportunities to bring the first game in line with the second and third, and we found some systems across the whole trilogy that needed a tune-up. So without spoiling too much, they talk about a Novaria boss encounter, which I've talked about in a previous video, where the room has been slightly reworked, so it's less cramped. They also changed the spawn points for it. But more importantly, for the rest of the game, their targeted combat updates they were making is squad mates can now be commanded independently of each other in the first Mass Effect, the same way you can command them individually in Mass Effect 2 and 3, which is huge. Huge. I cannot overstate that enough. Let's keep going. Some boss fights and enemies in the first game have been tweaked to be fairer, but still challenging. Cover has been improved across the trilogy. Additional cover added to some encounters. Entering and exiting cover is now more reliable. This is something that was pretty necessary in some encounters that they had cited in previous updates we've covered. XP has been rebalanced in the first game, which they're going to add more details, as well as ammo drops being rebalanced in mass effect 2 what you're noticing here is a trend of nothing being overbearing in the terms of changes i understand maybe some fears with the boss fight changes but ultimately the ones that they referred to like the novaria one was frustrating for some players i didn't have an issue with it when i went back and played it and i want to say it was 2013 i don't remember having a problem with it i feel like that's something that would stick with me if it was really like annoying uh, just because those types of things tend to stick with gamers, let's be honest here. Uh, they don't like annoying things. Uh, but really, to me, what I like most here is the addition of cover. I think that's good because there have been some rooms that are like way too entirely open. Uh, and when Mass Effect is built as a cover shooter, that doesn't feel that great. What I worry about is it 
interfering with level design in certain situations where you just have the very convenient cropped up sandbags. Uh, we saw that in Outriders, we saw it in Gears of War. It's sort of the issue with these third person cover shooters where you have convenient points to crouch down behind that kind of break the idea of the design of the area in the real world. So. I do worry a little bit about that because I just notice those things. And do they ruin games for me? Do they make me take points off? No, but I can't help but mention them. Um, on top of that, squad mate commands, being able to do that independently in the first one is really good because that's something that will translate to the rest of the trilogy and had to absolutely be there. So I'm happy to see them doing that. More specifically, when it comes to XP and the rebalancing of Mass Effect 2, they say that with combat comes XP. XP gained during the first game has been rebalanced for better consistency, especially towards the game's end. Players who complete most aspects of the game should be able to more reliably get to higher levels on a single playthrough, rather than needing to play through a second time to do so. Additionally, there is no longer a level cap on a first playthrough. As a final gunplay change, we also tweaked ammunition in Mass Effect 2. We found that ammo was spawning too scarcely in the original game, so we've increased the drop rate for ammo in Mass Effect 2, particularly when using a sniper rifle, since that had reduced ammo drop rates in the original release. So, you know, Mass Effect, not really a survival horror game. I don't mind if they overload you with ammo. I don't think the intensity of the gameplay really comes from that. It's about the managing of abilities, your squad mates, staying alive through like an onslaught of enemies, utilizing your cover and the level design in a strategic manner. That's where the challenge really spawns from. So for me, ammo count, go ahead, bump it up. Give me infinite. I don't care because that's not the core of the challenge there. Uh, but where it comes to XP... Um, this ties into some of the achievement reworks they're doing. So this game, we'll talk about a little bit more, shares an entire list throughout all of the games. And I remember with the first Mass Effect game, and Bioware typically did this, was like beat the game once and then beat it again. So now you can hit that level cap in a first playthrough because they've rebalanced the XP. So it does not require two playthroughs. So now you may see an achievement slash trophy that says beat the game and then hit the level cap rather than beating it twice or something along those lines. Dragon Age 2 also did an uh, achievement like this. So I just thought that those two were a little bit connected in a, a meta way that I wanted to point out, but more importantly is just the ability to scale up. And I think this is rebalanced because you can take on insanity right away, which your boy's doing, by the way. We're going to take it on. We're going to see how we do here. Really excited about that. It's going to be some of the most fun streams of all time. I'm so excited for it. But anyway, uh, XP reworks sound great to me because of things like that. All right, let's talk about the Mako. This is the vehicle in Mass Effect 1. They said we got to talk about the infamous M35 Mako. This legendary vehicle from the first Mass Effect has been calibrated to perform better than ever. In the original game, the physics tuning for the Mako made it feel too light and bouncy, even at times becoming uncontrollable. But now it's a much smoother ride while still being lovable like before. Yes, you can still drive it off cliffs to your heart's content, which is good to hear. So here are some of the ways they have changed it, which we've talked about in previous videos. They improved the handling, so physics tuning improved improved to feel weightier and slide around less, which is definitely good news. Uh, improved camera controls, resolved issues preventing the Mako from accurately aiming at lower angles. Shields recharge faster, new thrusters added for a speed boost, so this can get you, you know, up certain points in the map or get you to your next destination quicker because sometimes the Mako felt way too slow. Uh, it's cooldown is separate from the jump jets. The XP penalty while in the Mako has been removed. So this is really important because there were some combat encounters that were just way easier with the Mako and now you don't get less for engaging in them in the Mako and instead like getting out and kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage. That never made much sense. Uh, touching lava no longer results in an instant mission failure instead deals damage over time. Uh, this one... <laughs> This one, I think a lot of people are going to be really happy about because, you know, then you'd have to like reload an old save and depending on how the auto saves are, which they're saying they improved, but in the original, uh, going back to a manual save could sometimes make you like want to pull your hair out because, uh, you know, you get frustrated at yourself. So the Mako, we've talked about it before. One of the major problems with it was, was getting from point A to point B in a way that didn't feel like it was taking forever. Um, and so adding those extra boosts was really good. I felt like Andromeda had good vehicle control. So if they're going to sort of take that and bring it over into Mass Effect 1, uh, I'm going to actually be pretty happy with that because exploring planets in that vehicle, which I am forgetting the name of in Andromeda, who cares about that game? I'm going to be honest. But um, anyway, uh, exploring in that game did feel pretty good. Um, and so I just hope that they're taking a page from that book, if anything. Character creation also got a bit of a buff here. We can see that they had additional skin tones and hairstyles added to the game. They said that you can use the same character creator code seen on the bottom left of the image, which allows you to use the same shepherd across all three games or you can change their appearance at the start of each title and so they said customization options and character appearances have also been improved with updated textures and hair models i usually you know i like hair in games 
but I normally didn't care until I played Outriders, and as much as I'm enjoying Outriders, the character customization in that game drove me off the edge. I can't believe how few hairstyles there are in there. So having more, this is a blessing. You're learning it now with me. Appreciate it. Thank Bioware. Thank them for giving us more hair. We've also added the Mass Effect Genesis comics by Dark Horse into the base experience before Mass Effect 2 and 3 as an optional experience so players can make choices from previous games no matter where they choose to start. So this is actually really surprising because they're putting all this work into Mass Effect 1. Clearly that needs the entire rework, right? That's the one that's getting the major changes. And they're saying pretty much that if you want to start at 2, if you just hate one that much, you can just make major plot point choices. I believe it was 6. You can just make those choices and then start off at two. And that takes a lot of guts to be like, hey, we put all this time in here and you can just opt out. I think most sensible people aren't going to. I think they understand most are interested in seeing it through. At least I feel that way. Maybe I'm projecting a bit like, come on, if you're really just going to start with two, what the freak are you doing? But really, it's actually pretty awesome that they're doing something like this. I'm very shocked at that because... To, to, to pretty much rework the entirety of a game and then go, you can skip it. That's uh, that's not easy. On top of that, they have a new unified launcher for all three games, including trilogy-wide settings for subtitles and languages. Saves are still unique to each game and can be managed independently of each other, so there's no overriding a general trilogy save. Updated character creator options, as mentioned above, which we talked about. Fem Shep for Mass Effect 3 is available as the new default female option in all three games, which we're going to be using. And the Fem Shep design from the original is still available as a preset option. Achievements, like I said, we're going to talk about this. Across the the trilogy have been updated new achievements have been added to the trilogy and progress for some achievements now carries across all three games such as killing 250 enemies across all games achievements that were streamlined into one and made redundant were removed a number of achievements have had their objectives slash descriptions and or names updated so while they don't specifically say it stating that progress carries for some achievements across all three games states is a unified list so this means that it's not going to be a mass effect one legendary edition uh trophy and achievement list mass effect 2 mass effect 3 they're giving you one list across all three games and we've seen this a lot if you want to check out some capcom collections like they've done it for the mega man zero and zx advent collection for the mega man x collection uh the legacy collection they take all the trophies and achievements and put them across the entire series of games and so for platinum trophy hunters it's a big investment especially with what capcom did where they make you know eight different side scrollers that are really difficult and they give you 30 achievements to chase down you're like come on there's more here we know there's more here uh so i'm excited to see whatever this achievement list is but of course as that starts to come out beware of spoilers integrated weapons and armor dlc packs so this is something we've talked about before weapons and armor dlc packs are now integrated naturally into the game they're obtainable via research or by purchasing them from merchants as you progress through the entire game rather than being immediately unlocked from the start this ensures overall balance and progression across mass effect 2 and 3 the recon hood for mass effect 2 and the cerberus ajax armor from me3 are available at the start of each game and the additional gameplay and quality of life improvements are the audios remixed and enhanced across all games hundreds of legacy bugs from the original are fixed native controller and 21 by 9 display support on pc with direct x11 compatibility <sighs> exhale oh my god this game man like i would have been so happy with just a port i'm actually kind of shocked <laughs> how much is here you know it's insane there's a there's a lot I'm still kind of processing it. Like I read over all of this notes and I'm like, man, like they want to make this the definitive way to play it. And so I hope this game does not come out and end up being like a master chief collection. I worry about that sometimes. I just, I feel really good about this game. I'm excited for it just a month away. So fingers crossed. But we got more to go over galaxy of war rebalancing. Aren't you happy? You planted yourself in that comfy chair. Aren't you as commander Shepard, you're tasked with the hardest mission of all defeating the reapers and saving the galaxy from annihilation this comes to a head in mass effect 3 when the galaxy unites but your choices from across the trilogy lead you there and determine who fights at your side the galaxy at war feature puts you at the heart of the reaper war from the normandy's combat information center which has been rebalanced in the legendary edition for example galactic readiness is no longer impacted by external factors that aren't part of the collection like multiplayer the old companion app from mass effect 3 however that doesn't necessarily mean defeating the reapers will be easy all right, so as much as I love Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, and I'm going to sit here every single video and tell you why they got to put it back in, what they're doing here is pretty cool. 
It's actually a really good change that I didn't think they would do. I remember thinking of it at one point. I was like, no, that's kind of high effort. But they're doing it. And while I know Mass Effect 3's ending leaves a lot to be desired, uh, I'm surprised they're addressing some of these uh, elephants in the room, so to say. So let's keep going. The more content you complete across the entire trilogy, the more likely you'll be prepared for the final fight in its conclusion. If you only play Mass Effect 3, you'll have to do just about every option available in the game to be eligible for an ending that doesn't result in massive galactic losses. Playing the first two games and carrying over your progress is the most reliable way to get good results in the final hours of the Reaper War. For comparison, if you previously played Mass Effect 3 with the extended cut, which included the galactic readiness rebalancing, fully preparing for the final fight will be more difficult to achieve in the Legendary Edition. And on that note, the extended cut is now the game's default finale, which it should be. However, Readying your intergalactic armies will be made a bit easier by a number of critical bug fixes and backend improvements made to the Paragon and Renegade system in Mass Effect 2. We resolved some legacy issues that inhibited accurate reputation stats from being displayed and outright prevent certain dialogue options from being selectable when they should have been. Because of this, key moments that have been notoriously difficult to achieve in Mass Effect 2 and Impacted 3 can now be completed more reliably, leading to better results in the story's final act. All right, so I actually really like this. And I know it's kind of a hot take because I, I, while I have an issue with Mass Effect 3's ending in the sense of, of course, wanting more repercussions, I really like the emphasis that the whole journey matters. I think this is great. You know, of course, we've been able to port our characters in before, but I really like the idea of making it more difficult and saying like, hey, if you start from the beginning as Shepard and you go through one, you go through two, and you're building those relationships, there's more of a stronger sensation of payoff than just hopping into three and playing that one, which may for many people out there be their favorites. I think it's a smart design decision. It encourages you to start from the beginning in every way, shape and form, um, but it's also not walling you out apparently. And more importantly than anything, saying, hey, we fixed bugs that will impact this system. Um, I actually was not aware of any of these bugs, truth be told. So to read that and see that and say, hey, we've fixed these things that would have impacted this system sounds like a more traditional way of how they would have approached it. You can't change the ending of the game as much as I was there saying before this, what if they remade it and they kind of worked it backwards and, and thought of how can this ending work if we just add a couple of dialogue options here and there? That would have been really, 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 really cool to see. And I always hope that they consider that. But I think this is one of the better options available, and I'm pretty satisfied with it, all things accounted for, which I didn't expect to be saying. So I gotta say, good job to them. This this all on paper, at least, sounds great. This game is huge. And so get ready. We're just a month out at this point in time. We have a lot of information, I'm sure, that's gonna continue to roll out. And with that, lots of news and discussions to be at here. So I leave it in your hands. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.